Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the more recent discoveries in regards to various types of black holes located around our galaxy, and also some of the black holes in the nearby galaxies as well. Specifically focusing on some of the more unusual discoveries, or discoveries that to some extent are somewhat counterintuitive. With many of these discoveries helping us understand how extremely unusual black holes are, and also helping us understand what sort of activity they usually have around them. And let's actually start right here. So what you're looking at in this particular simulation is a representation of what the scientists refer to as a black hole echo. Something that the scientists have detected in the past coming from various accretion disks or various black holes, but usually involving a black hole that's actively feeding on its neighbor. For example, some sort of a star or possibly some sort of a planetary object. And as this feeding process happens, a lot of the material from its partner, for example a star, will start to fall into the black hole and heat up dramatically, eventually producing X-rays. In other words, it creates an extremely bright and very powerful environment. And in many cases, these black holes will have quite a large accretion disk and possibly a lot of other material spiraling in this region. And this material can be pretty thick, to the point that it actually starts reflecting or refracting certain frequencies. In this case, the X-rays will start to emanate and start to reflect, creating something very similar to what you see right here, with the part in the middle being the event horizon of the actual black hole. And though originally it was thought to be relatively rare, very recently the scientists have discovered at least 8 systems where this seems to happen quite a lot. With all of this detected using the iconic NICER telescope you see right here that's currently operating on top of the International Space Station. And this is an X-ray telescope that's actually produced quite a lot of data already. And in the past, similar techniques using various black hole echoes have actually been used to try to calculate or even map the region around a typical black hole. Mostly because these reflections are coming from the surface of the accretion disk and this allows us to sort of, to some extent, visualize what this region might look like. A slightly older video on the channel describes this in a little bit more detail and you can probably find this somewhere in the description below. And so out of 26 systems analyzed by NICER telescope in the last few years, the scientists were able to discover 8 binaries, X-ray binaries, with all of them containing a black hole that was producing these echoes, suggesting that this is a pretty common phenomenon, and of course suggesting that we can use this to study these black holes in a lot more detail and possibly map the region around them. With all of this very likely being related to the black hole's corona that seems to expand outwards, and as it expands, it sort of throws out the final X-ray light flash that's then reflected by the accretion disk resembling something similar to what you see in this particular animation. So this is a process we think happens around many black holes, and now that we've detected 8 of these, this might help the scientists to figure out how all of these different parts around black holes connect together. Especially because this is a process that does repeat quite a lot, and a process that starts over once the black hole reaches a certain limit. But it's really only in the last few years that the scientists started to study these X-ray binaries in more detail. And very recently NASA released a really really cool video that the NASA refers to as the black hole orrery. Essentially all of the known X-ray binaries, 22 of them, in the single image, in a single video. With all of them presented in a lot of detail with the view that we actually see from planet Earth. And in this case the color of the stars that ranges from blue-white to red represents the temperatures compared to our own sun. So anything that's blue and white is hotter than our sun, anything that's red is cooler than our sun. Although in this case, the simulation is also sped up quite dramatically, approximately 22,000 times. So this is not in real time. And so for example, here is the first ever confirmed black hole, Cygnus X1, located around 7,000 light years away from us. Although I guess it's important to note here that the actual black hole is still extremely small even compared to the star itself. In this case, even though it's approximately 21 masses of our own sun, it's really only approximately 120 kilometers across, so it's not as big as it appears. Then we have this black hole, Maxi J1659, that's the fastest known orbit of a black hole with an accretion disk. A single orbital period here is approximately two and a half hours. On the opposite side we have GRS1915, with the longest orbital period of 33.5 days. 
And here is the closest system to us that's approximately 3300 light years away. Still pretty far, but a lot closer than a lot of the other black holes. In this case, the orbit is equivalent to the orbit of Mercury around the Sun, actually a little bit larger than that. And so a pretty cool visualization and a pretty good way for us to imagine what all of these different black hole binaries look like. But these are of course only the X-ray binaries where a black hole has a partner from which it's consuming a lot of mass. A lot of black holes are completely invisible to us because they have nothing around them or because they do have something but it's really far away and they don't really produce any X-rays or any other observable light. I mean, they're called a black hole for a reason. But even though the scientists have only found a few dozen of these X-ray binaries, some of them already kind of defy explanation. For example, very recently the scientists found this very strange binary system where for some reason the black hole seems to actually orbit on the side compared to the star. The inclination here is approximately 40 degrees. And based on the formation of star systems and the evolution of star systems with different objects in them, currently this cannot really be explained. It's a mystery nobody has an answer to. This particular system is known as Maxi J1820 plus 070. But that's of course just one of many discoveries out there. Some of the more interesting discoveries are actually in regards to things we've seen and things we've heard so far. Very recently, another team from Chandler X-ray Telescope released another incredible video that essentially helps us hear a black hole. In this case, this is a sonification of a detection from 2003 of a supermassive black hole approximately 250 million light years away from us. And this is literally the lowest sound acoustic wave that is that we've ever heard. An acoustic wave created by all of the gas present in this region with basically the lowest note in the universe. Interestingly, when compared to a typical sound a human can hear, it's approximately 58 octaves below what's known as middle C, with a whooping frequency of 10 million years, not hertz, not seconds, 10 million years. And that's basically the sound that this particular black hole created. Which also is a good reminder that technically there is sound in space. It's just usually it's very extreme and extremely hard to hear for anyone that has hearing similar to humans. The frequencies in space would be very different from anything we're used to. And also usually involve some really extreme regions, such as for example molecular clouds, where a lot of gas starts to create these pressure waves that do resemble sound waves. But anyway, let's hear it, because it does sound quite strange and quite eerie. And the thing is, scientists believe that these pressure waves, or the sound, is actually somehow responsible for the regulation of star formation in various galaxies. In other words, these galactic sound waves play a very important role in the evolution of different galactic clusters and of course galaxies where all of this is happening as well. And so even though we don't really understand how all of this works just yet, the fact that we know that this exists and the fact that we know it affects galactic formations and of course formations of stars is something many scientists will probably be exploring for many years to come. But naturally, our understanding of all of this is still in its infancy. And so definitely quite a lot of interesting discoveries and unusual videos we've never seen before or sounds we've never heard before. But once the scientists discover more things about black holes or discover more unusual features, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.